What's up YouTube, welcome back to Celio's Network. Today we're going to be looking at a bunch of expanded lists. I've got this expanded list drop for you for Dallas Regionals. Before we get into the decks, let me just shout out potownstore.com. You can use code Celio for 5% off there. They specialize in PTCGO codes. They have like every code you could want and they automatically email them out. And also FlipsideGaming.com, use code CELIO, all caps, for 10% off of your next order, $10 or more. So, uh, before we start looking at the lists, I do want to say, these lists I've put varying levels of work into. Some of these lists I've made from scratch, others I copy and pasted a recent list from Limitless and made a few changes for Cosmic Eclipse and for the ban list updates. The purpose of these lists is not to have a give you like 30 perfect lists. Um, I think there's about 30 or so decks, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Uh, um, these aren't perfect lists for the tournament that's in 20 days from now. Um, these are base lists, so if there's an archetype anybody watching wants to build between now and Dallas or even after for fun, you can come back to this video or look in the Google Sheet, which I'll have in the description, and you have a good base list to start out with so you're not starting out with nothing, a blank zero out of 60 on PTCGO. And so, like I did mention, I will have a Google Sheet with all of these decks exported from PTCGO in it in the description below, and I'll probably try to do timestamps in the comments as well. Without further ado, let's start from the top. We'll be looking at ADP Dark. So, this is Turbo Dark with ADP in it, which is Arceus Dialgapalkia. Um, if you don't know what Arceus Dialgapalkia does, it's here for its alter creation GX. For the rest of this game, your, opponent, your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. If this Pokemon has at least one extra water energy attached to it, uh, when your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from those attacks, you take one more prize card. So uh, ADP can work really well with Turbo Dark, since you can use Double Dragon Energy to count as both of the energy requirements for Altered Creation GX. Um, in addition to that, Double Dragon Energy counts as two Dark Energy when you're uh, counting for Dark Pulse, so it makes your attack do more damage. It makes you able to power up Alter Creation GX in just one turn. And then also, uh, we've got uh, a very, very light tag team engine in here. So we do have the Zoro Ninja and the ADPs, and then I have a tag call, I have a Guzmahala, and I have a Malolana. Since Guzmahala can be good to find you your Chaotic Swell, your Double Dragon Energy, and a Fighting Fury Belt or Floatstone, Floatstone can help you get into ADP, um, but you can also use Dark Rye X to get into ADP. So when building this list, maybe you'll go heavier Floatstone, heavier Guzmahala, or you'll just forget about those and you'll just focus on retreating with Dark Rye EX. I don't want to spend too much time on any one deck, so on to the next one. Archies. Now, I did say there were going to be varying levels of work put into decks, and Archies is on the very, very low end of that spectrum. I really don't like Archies. If you watch or read any of my content, you'll know that Archies just isn't my thing. I don't really build it, test it, play against it unless a friend or a testing partner really wants to. Um, so I haven't made mon many changes. I took out the Marshadow Let Looses because they're now banned. I put in Duskull from Cosmic Eclipse because Spiritborn Evolution seems really good for this deck. Once during your turn, you may discard three cards from your hand. If you do, search your deck for a card that evolves from this Pokemon, yada yada. So you don't care about that extra effect. All you care about is once during your turn, you may discard three cards from your hand. So if you have Duskull and four cards and one of them is an Archies, then... You just empty your hand and then play Archies. So Duskull seems like something you might want to consider. I don't know if people are still going to play the Mewtwo and Mew engine or what they're doing, but I took a list from Limitless uh, from Portland, and I popped Duskull into it, and here we are. So like I said, I don't like Archies. Um, I'm not sure how good this list will be, but it is definitely a base list for Archies. And I didn't want to leave you guys without an Archies list because I'm sure I would get comments saying, where are the Archies? Uh, so my first of many Baby Necrozma decks, we have got uh, Baby Necrozma with ADP and Garbodor. Um, so I don't personally think 
ADP is very good in Ultra Necrozma, but I've heard talk about it, I've heard people asking for lists, and here we are. Uh, so, Guzma Hala works really well in Ultra Necrozma lists, and it can work just as well, or maybe even better, because of ADP, because you can search for your Double Dragon and your Float Stone, retreat out whatever's in the active, attach the Double Dragon to ADP, use it for Alter Creation the same way you would in Turbo Dark, and then, of course, your Luster of Downfall is doing a lot more damage. Garbotoxin is in this archetype because you want to shut off your Ultra Burst on Ultra Necrozma, so we'll just look at this card for a second in case you don't already know about it. <clears throat> Ultra Burst, this Pokemon can't attack unless your opponent has two or fewer prize cards remaining, so this is a bad ability that you want to turn off so you can use your Luster of Downfall. And Garbodor helps you shut that off, as well as Silent Lab. Uh, this is not my preferred build of Ultra Necrozma, but it is a variant that I've seen talk about, so I wanted to at least have a base list for it in this video. Next is Baby Ultra Necrozma with Muck and Octillery. I think this one's pretty good. Um, I've adapted the bicycles from Grant Manley's list, I believe he posted on Poke Beach. Uh, it was before the paywall with bicycles in it. So we threw those in. I think Great Catcher is pretty good, but I have three gust effects in here, and I think you could probably cut one of them. Uh, I'm not sure which. And then we've only got Double Dragon in here, just like in the last list. Uh, so, But we do have the Pokemon Ranger in case of something like Chaos Swell from Tina EX or Miss Magius. Uh, but, so this one, you're using Octillery for more draw power in uh, instead of the Garbotoxin for a stronger ability lock. Alola Muck gets the job done because you just need to turn off your Ultra Burst ability. Uh, but you could really get by without the Alola Muck and just using Silent Labs to turn off your ability. And I have the Resetting Hole to get rid of Chaotic Swells because uh, those can be really bad for this deck if you need to get your Silent Lab into play. And that's pretty much all that's unique about this list in particular. Next is the Bird Trio and Pyroar deck. Uh, this was in top 16 at Portland, I believe, uh, by Drew Kennett, if I'm not mistaken. So, I've actually tested this deck a bit. I played it on stream a couple weeks ago, and I, I think I said that I liked it because Pyroar was in it, and, like, that was, that was the appeal to me. I like Pyroar. Um, but, so, the, the point is you want to, uh, rebirth a ho with multiple energy onto it, and then you... Ninja Boy into a Moltres Zapdos Articuno GX, and you can use Sky Legends to do 110 to three of your opponent's Pokemon. And if your opponent has like two Shamans down, that's four prizes you're taking right there. And then you can also just use Pyroar's Intimidating Main as a wall that you send up after shuffling your Moltres Zapdos Articuno into the deck. Or you can use Pyro as a main attacker if the matchup that you're playing against does not have any evolution Pokemon to counter Pyro. Um, I definitely think this is more of a fun deck in general, but, uh, Drew Kennett did get top 16 with it, which definitely makes it competitively viable. Although at a glance, it is more of a casual deck compared to some of the other decks on this list. Next is Buzzwell Garbodor. So Buzzwell Garbodor lost a huge thing in Let Loose when the bands hit. Uh, Let Loose Power Plant was like the big thing for... Uh, Buzzwell Garbodor, that's how it kind of made decks underperform in the early games, so Buzzwell Garbodor could just take prizes slower with these uh, single prize attackers. I've put a lot of new toys in here, I think. We've got an Ultra Necrozma, we've got a Jirachi Stardust, we've got the new Blacephalon from Cosmic Eclipse, and we've got the new Mimikyu from Cosmic Eclipse. And also a couple of Guzmahalas. Um, so, let's talk about these cards I put in. Jirachi Stardust, this card is special energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. If you do prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. Uh, this can be pretty good versus Baby Ultra Necrozma if you can't keep up with their prize trade since uh, you're both single prizers, but you aren't even guaranteed to knock it out even though it only has 110 HP. Um, you could just Stardust them and that slows them down for a turn. You can Stardust them multiple times even if they uh, like attach a dis special energy to the bench after you discard it with Stardust. Guzma them up and Stardust them again. Um, this Blacephalon, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. If your opponent has exactly three prize cards remaining, put 12 damage counters on them instead. 
So I do have a counter gain in here, and I also have a counter energy. So uh, Sledgehammer, when they're at four prizes, you can swing in 120 for an energy. And then this Blacephalon, when there are three prizes, you can swing in for 12 damage counters wherever you want. And then Nihilego, when there are two prizes, you can use Nightcap to copy one of their attacks. Presumably swinging in for a lot of damage. And then uh, if you haven't finished them up by then, you can use Beast Game GX, hopefully. Uh, so you just have this nice uh, kind of curve when there are four prizes to three prizes to two prizes of attackers to use at their corresponding uh, prize counts. Then we've got Mimic U Shadow Box Pokemon GX that have any damage counters on them have no abilities. We are not playing any GXs with abilities. Most decks are. So Mimic U can really help us. And then we can use Shrine of Punishment. This is kind of a win win because we're not playing Power Plant anymore, but we're using Mimic U to do kind of the same thing. And then Shrine of Punishment is also damaging. So it's kind of like we're playing Power Plant, but we're also putting extra damage on the board. Of course, there are pros and cons to this, but. Uh, I do think Shrine of Punishment, extra damage is great to have with HP getting higher and higher all the time. And our Pokemon don't do a ton of damage at the base of their attacks. We do have Trash Lynch still, just a 3-2 line. Yeah, 3-2 line. Um, if they do empty their hand and put a bunch of trainers and items, a bunch of items into, the, into their discard pile over the course of the game, Garbodor can be really good. Um, and Ultra Necrozma, since I'm playing the counter energy so we can use counter energy for blacephalon or ultra uh luster of downfall for 170 discard and energy really isn't too bad if they already have um an ability lock on us with silent lab or with garbador garbotoxin we can use ultra necrozma and use that ability lock to our advantage if they don't we can just wait until they're at two or fewer prizes so maybe after nihil lego and they're at two they knock out the nihil lego we go in with the Ultra Necrozma when they're at 1 and maybe win the game. Or even just do 170 and discard the energy and then they can't attack next turn and we end up winning because of that. So it's a cute option to try out. I'm not sure if it's great yet. Uh, but like I said, base lists give you something to work with here and that's what I'm doing. Uh, next is Celosaur. I actually surprisingly put some time into this one and tried to make this list pretty good. Um... I'm not sure if it's, after the work I did put into it, I'm still not convinced if it's any better than any other tanky deck like Guardian or Agarau or anything like that. Um, I like the fact that you can sit behind Wobbuffet kind of like a Primal Groudon deck. Um, and I like a lot of the heal options. You have Acerola, you have Gardenia, Life Forest, Malolana. Um, you can stay bulky with the Fighting Fury belts, the Aether Paradise Conversation area, and of course the Floral Heals from Shaman. Um, so the, the deck is pretty cool. I like it, but it might just be a little too slow and a little too underwhelming. Uh, the special conditions, you can't forget about those, so it makes Pollen Hazard equal to doing 80 and Confusion. Um, and then you oh you also have herbal energies to heal as well. And so Guzmahala is actually pretty cool for this deck because you can search out either a DCE or a herbal and then your Aether Paradise and a Fighting Fury Belt. So the deck has a lot of options to play around with and I think it's a pretty cool deck and at the very least fun to play with. I think it could be threatening versus uh, smaller or lower damage output single prize decks that are focusing on weakness. I guess fire weakness isn't something that a ton of decks are focusing on right now. A lot of single prize decks want to hit for like fighting weakness to take out Zorark decks and Turbo Dark decks. Um, so I think the deck has some sort of potential. And like I said, I actually did put some time into this list. This one uh, is definitely higher on the spectrum of lists that I've worked on on this uh, video. But if you guys are any interested in Celesaur, I think this is a great place to start. Next is Egg Route, another deck that I've actually worked a lot with. Um, this is the list that I've come to so far. I made a video a couple weeks ago had, that had a couple of lists in it. Um, this is the culmination of the work and the multiple lists that I've made. I ended up keeping the one Vile Plume GX because I think Massive Bloom is a really good attacker uh, for Egg Route counters. Like it can just uh, one shot a Pyroar and the Pyroar doesn't one shot it back. Um, we're playing the three power plant, one lab, one life forest, and then I have a couple healing options, the one Gardenia and the two Malolana. Um, Agrao 
I'm not sure if it's actually very well positioned at the time I'm recording this video. It seemed a lot better like a week or two ago, but now it's just a deck that's on the radar, and it's one of those decks that the more on radar it is, the worse it seems. Uh, so I definitely think the deck has good synergy and it's good matchups and some sort of strength going on, but it is not in my top picks at the moment. Uh, but this isn't really a meta discussion. I just want to give you the list. So here's my eight row list. Next is Firebox. This one is coming from Ahmed Ali. Uh, he messaged this to me on Facebook. So thanks to him. Um, I think I only made a couple changes and he also said, uh, the list he sent didn't have Jirachi, but he said uh, I could throw it in if I wanted to, and I'm a fan of Jirachi as a baby Necro counter, so here we are with Jirachi. Um, Ahmed, Ahmed played a similar deck to Richmond, I believe. I'm not sure about Portland, but he played a similar deck to, uh, to Richmond. Um, so if you're a fan of Welder and Zard in standard, maybe this deck translates well over to expanded for you. Other than that, I really don't have too much to say on this deck though. Next is Guardian. I have two Guardian decks for you guys today. Uh, this is the first one. This is without the tag call engine and the other one will be with. Other than that, uh, not too many differences. Uh, Megalopony Jigglypuff's a very good card for the deck. Very strong against Turbo Dark. Um, and the whole deck strategy is you just move energy around with Fairy Transfer and heal your Guardians with Max Pots and Acerola or AZ, whichever one you have. And if you're moving energy around, it doesn't matter if it's AZ or Acerola unless you have a tool on it, but that's a different story. So <laughs> you usually want to use Acerola or, or Max Potion, but AZ can come into play if um, you need to pick up a Megalop or a Guardian that got stuck active without energy and maybe your ability locked so you can't use Aromatisse. Um, so AZ could work sometimes. Um, but yeah, I think Guardian is actually really great. Um, it's been seeing play at expanded cups that have been happening over the past couple of days. I think it'll continue to see play at cups and continue to get hype uh, leading up to Dallas. So definitely a list that you want to have on the back burner. And definitely a deck you want to have in mind. Um, of course, next is the Guardian with Tag Call I just mentioned. And luckily, I just cloned it by mistake. So, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so, we'll have a, an extra Guardian Tag Call at the end of this list. Uh, so, this is the one with Tag Call in it, like I said. So, we've got the four Tag Call, and then I've thrown in, let's see, we got Guz Mahala, Cynthia Caitlin, and Malolana for our Tag Team supporters. But then Tag Call also searches out Guardian and Megalopony. So, then our... Uh, ball search engine can be a little different. I only have the one Ultra Ball, but then I have three Level Ball, since Level Ball can search Aromatisse or Spritzy, and getting Aromatisse into play is definitely a big deal. Um, the Mallow Lana in this deck is usually worse than Acerola, but the good thing about it is that it's a searchable supporter, a searchable healing support supporter by uh, Tag Call. So that's why it's in here. And then, of course, the Guzmahala I really love because you can get Wonder Energy, Fighting Fury Belt, and then either Power Plant or Silent Lab, whichever one you need. Um, and then Cynthia Caitlin, just a draw supporter that you can search out with Tag Call in case your hand isn't that great. So, again, pretty similar to the last Guardian list, but this one has Tag Call in it. Uh, so, Guru Dolls. This is my stab at this archetype. Um, this is... This has got a little bit of play at League Cup so far, and I just put together the things I've heard about the deck into this deck. This is untested. It's just my stab at what the list might look like. Uh, so I, I've heard, uh, I saw, I think I saw Zach Cooper played Hoopa at a League Cup. Um, I have friends that were at the League Cups that things like this were being played at. So I got some uh, opinions on what the counts might be, things like that. Um, I have Clay in this one, but then I have Steven's Resolve in a different Dolls deck. I think they're both fine options, but I definitely know people like Clay right now. And I do think Clay is good for the deck. The thing that might stop people from playing these decks is that they're traditionally, uh, stall decks are traditionally played with Tropical Beach and Expanded, and I do believe these are being played with Tropical Beach at the moment. Uh, but you could try it out with other stadiums and see how it works. But I think you'll be at a disadvantage if you're playing, uh, like, if you have the exact list of one of the good players or one of the good lists that players have been using and you substitute Tropical Beach out for other stadiums, you'll be at a disadvantage. 
Um, yeah, but other than that, take a look at this list. It's uh, it's a control slash stall type deck slash mill, whatever you want it to be. Um, the list has a lot of stuff going on, um, but from what I've gathered and pictures I've seen posted of the decks and the lists and whatnot, this is what I've come up with. Next, we've got Hitmon Wob. Uh, this is mostly Zach Lesage's deck from Portland. I got it from Limitless, but I've added in Lily's Polka Doll because I think that's a pretty cool option you have with Hitmon Chan now. Hit and run into Polka Dolls. So while you're building up damage, if they don't have a gust effect around the Polka Doll, uh, you can just kind of stall for a turn there. Uh, necess not necessarily stall, but or maybe get a free hit in, and maybe I should say. Uh, but of course, we still have the wobs, which are a pretty big deal, a bit a pretty big part of the deck. Um, but other than that, uh, the deck is pretty much still the same. It lost let loose like every deck did, and I think it also had a reset stamp, so it also lost that. Uh, but Hitmon Wob, I'm not really sure where it stands, but like I said lists for Dallas so you can start testing and that's what we're doing here. Uh next I've got Lucario Landorus. Uh, I took um Zach's top 32 list. Yeah, he got 22nd in Portland with uh Lucario Landorus and I believe someone else also made day 2 with his list. Um so I I changed a couple things. Um did I put any new cards? Yeah, Guzmahala is really good for this deck. Um, so I put Guzmahala's in because you can get strong energy, focus, sash, and then your stadium of choice. Um, I think the deck could be really good with all the hype Turbo Darks getting. And the Turbo Dark hype is real. Like, the deck is really solid, so it deserves the hype that it's getting. Um, maybe fighting decks are going to be really good because of that Turbo Dark hype. So yeah, if you're interested in fighting, we've got a list for you. Mewtwo and Mew. Um, I took Kiernan's top eight list from Portland and made a couple changes. I put one Guzmahala in since it can grab you uh, your Dimension Valley, a special energy, and then either Hood or Floatstone. Um, and I also put in Megalopony Jigglypuff, which is a new card for the deck as well. Other than that, not much to talk about there, but um, if you don't know what the deck does, it, there are a lot of Pokemon here, so it can look confusing. Um, it's just a Mew box deck. It's what we, it's what everyone kind of decided was the way to run Mew in Expanded. Um, and Perfection allows you to just use a, a huge collection of EXs and GXs from spanning many sets. Um, so you have all of these different attackers in the deck that you can copy with Perfection from Mew to Mew. You have Dimension Valley to make those attacks cost less. Uh, you have Stealthy Hood so you can attack through Plume. Um, and oh, also Stealthy Hood so you're not affected by Garbatoxin and a little Muck, which is very important. And then you can just kind of use Distortion Door a lot and then remove them off your bench with the Spare Ray and even move the damage counters around with Cursed Eyes from Absol. Uh, so yeah, Mewtwo Mew, I still think it's a pretty strong deck. You'll probably see a good bit of it um, on the ladder leading up to Dallas, and I think it'll have a pretty good showing at Dallas. Pyroar Miss Magius, created, I believe, by Michael K. Tron and Isaiah Bradner, um, and then Gibby Tang Archer played this at Richmond, did not make day two. I think he lost his win in it or something like that. Um, I made one big change to the deck, which was putting a pyro break in here since it fire fire colorless does 180 and, uh, pyro counters may not be taking that into account. Uh, so you can just swing for 180, something like a plume GX, like I mentioned earlier. The point of this deck is if you're playing against a deck that only has basic Pokemon, you go in with Pyroar and nothing but Pyroars, swing Scorching Fang until you win the game because they can't damage you through Intimidating Main. If you're playing a deck that is all special energy or mostly special energy, you go in with Chaos Wheel and they can't play any special energy from their hand. So something like a Zorark deck, Ultra Necrozma deck, Buzzwool Garbodor deck, um, as Magius is great versus all of those. And the deck doesn't really have too much depth to it. Uh, the bad thing about this deck, in my opinion, is that its good matchups are really good and its bad matchups are unwinnable. Uh, so usually I try to stay away from those kinds of decks, but I think if you could break this archetype, it's actually really good. Like, 
uh, if you could make its bad matchups somewhat winnable and then keep its good matchups really, really good uh, on paper, that sounds like a good idea. So if you never heard of this deck before or you did and you wanted the list, here's the list. So get cracking on making Pyramus Magius broken. Next, we've got Sable Dolls. Um, this video, this uh, deck was in my video on the Japanese Sable Dolls list, so I won't go too much into it. Uh, this was my North American adaptation since there were banned cards in the Japanese version of the list. Uh, but basically, it's like the Guru Dolls list that I showed earlier, um, except like I said, I'm playing Stevens instead of Clay in here. I'm not sure which one is better. I'll probably experiment with both. Uh, if you're playing this type of deck, the strategy is you just stall out your opponent, make them waste resources, knocking out Lily's Polka Dolls and Substitutes while you mill their deck with Handiwork and Trick Shovel. And then uh, you're just getting back resources with Sableye after the Dolls are gone, and you have the, the Life Dew Lana's Fishing Rod uh, combo. Life Dew makes uh, your opponent take one less prize card when they knock out one of your Pokemon. So um, these decks are actually getting play at Lee Cups right now in expanded format. Um, and kind of the spotlight's kind of on this right now. Um, so I'm not sure if this can stay good from now until Dallas since it's already a known thing. But if it wasn't being talked about right now and like uh, people didn't discover it before Dallas, then I think it could have been a pretty dirty deck for the tournament. Uh, we've got Sable Garb next. So Sable Garb, this is my list for the deck. I actually worked on this quite a bit. Um, I think Sable, Sable Garb is still pretty good. I haven't quite broken the deck yet. Um, but it's not the same Sable Garb that we were looking at for Richmond and Portland, and you got to remember that. So it's not a hand lock deck anymore. You want to maybe get something stuck in the active, or you just want to exhaust all their resources, whether that be using Get Lost against decks that play out of the discard pile, or just removing all four special energy against Double Dragon or Double Colorless energy decks, or even uh, Flare Grunt. Uh, Flare running away basic energy even can be good. Um, Durant with chip off, uh, it's kind of like make him pay from Persian from team up, except discard cards from your opponent's hand at random until he or she has four cards in her hand. So in his or her hand. So against something like a Zoro garb deck where they have huge hands of like 10 to 15 cards, uh, chip off, maybe you hit a double colorless or two and then, uh, Maybe you also fobbed them earlier in the turn. So you can get rid of resources really quickly with Durant, especially if they don't know about the card. Um, Bundle B is nice because it can both put cards, it can get you back resources and it can mill your opponent. So it's really nice because of that. And Garbodor still being in Sableye has its merit because people might expect Sableye decks to not play Garbodor or just less Garbodor in the field because of the Sable Doll decks or the Guru Doll decks. So uh, Garbodor is still very strong. I don't think uh, Garbatoxin should be a card that we ignore at all. Here we've got another Turbo Dark deck, and this one is without ADP. I think Weavile GX is just really solid to have around um, proof as a deck. Uh, so I think keeping Weavile GX is a good idea. Uh, Guzzlord from Cosmic Eclipse with the Red Banquet. It does a 120, and if your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack, take one more prize card. Uh, this is a really good thing that I've been seeing in Turbo Dark decks. Um, I think it's definitely worth it with Fighting Fury Battle does 130. So like Red Banquet, uh, Guzma up a Shaman EX, knock it out with Red Banquet. You took three prize cards. Now just knock out one of their tag teams and you win. I think that's really good. So Guzzlord shouldn't be slept on. I think Weavile GX is going to be in most Turbo Dark decks, which kind of scares Eggrel off. Uh, other than that, nothing special. Turbo Dark's a really, really good deck. I think you can build it many ways. There's a lot of Dark Attackers. There's a lot of Trainer Counts to do. Uh, you can mess with Chaotic Swells or Skyfields. Uh, heavier Dedenne or Heavier Shaman. No Weavile or Weavile ADP or no ADP. There's a lot you could do with it. I think Turbo Dark's really, really good, and this is one of my lists for it. Uh, Vespaquen, this is a deck that I have not put a lot of time into, but I wanted to have a list for it in this resource for everyone. Uh, so of course it will be in the Google sheet. I really don't have much to say about it. Um, I took Grant Manley's from Portland, um, 
I, I'm not sure if he was the only Vespa Quinn in day two there, but I took his from Portland, made a couple changes because it had uh, Marshado Let Loose in it, I believe. I definitely had to take banned cards out of it, so it was probably Marshado Let Loose. Yeah, two of those, I think. Um, So I made a couple changes, but nothing too drastic. I put Great Catcher in. It's a new card from Cosmic Eclipse to the deck didn't have the last time it was played. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with Vespa Quinn, nor do I have a lot to say about this deck uh, specifically. So on to the next one. Zorogarb, I put out a video last week or so with Zorogarb in it. Um, I haven't changed it since then, so it's the same list if you watched that video as well. If you didn't, go back and watch that video because there's some things worth hearing about Zorogarb and about early lists and early techs and metas in general. Um, so this is a very teched out version of Zorogarb. It has Bisharp for Guardian, it has Megalopony for Turbo Dark, it has Jirachi for... Um, Baby Ultra Necrozma, it has Oracorio for Night Marsh and Vespiquen, a lot of techs. Guzmahala is a great new card for Zorogarb. I don't really have anything else to say about it. Like I said, if you're interested in Zorogarb, go back and watch that video that was specifically on Zorogarb. Uh, Zoro Toad. So I made this list when I first started testing Expanded probably three weeks ago. Maybe two, two and a half, um, and I haven't really touched it since. There's actually no new cards from Cosmic Eclipse in it. I just wanted to have a Zoro Toad list built in case somebody wanted to test against it, or I got an idea, or I just wanted to play around with it. Uh, so, now you guys have a Zoro Toad deck. Uh, there you go. And, let's see. Next is, oh, Guardian, this was the second Guardian that I copied earlier by mistake, uh, Night March. I don't know why my searching thing got messed up there. Uh, so yeah, Night March. Uh, Night March, again, I haven't put a lot of time into it. I added one clay in place of the fourth Sycamore because I think there could be hands that you want to use a clay instead, and if they're all in the discard anyway, because you could battle compress them. Then you can versus Seeker for either Clay or Sycamore, whichever one it is that you want. And like I said, I think there could be hands where Clay is better for you than a Sycamore, because you want to keep your hand, but you also want to draw more item cards. So I threw a Clay in there, and other than that, we took out the Let Looses, so a couple other cards did get changed around. Um, I think Night March seems okay for, for, uh, for Dallas, but I don't really have a hard opinion on it at the moment and my search keeps getting messed up here i don't know why but we're on the last deck now anyway which is shock lock um my friend jeffrey torres sent me this list and said that i could share it in this video so thanks to jeffrey torres shout out um shock lock another deck that i don't have a lot of experience with but like I said, this is a resource for you guys. I want you to have base lists to work with if there's an archetype you're interested in. Uh, so Shock Lock, it relies on, a, a, there's a combo that happens. So you Evo Shock them so they're paralyzed. Um, and in your active spot, you want a Stoutland. So it has this ability, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent can't play any supporter cards from his or her hand. Um, and after you Evo Shock, you immediately de-evolution spray the Raichu back to your hand. So next turn, you can just Evo Shock them again, and they can't play a supporter. And you use uh, Memory Energy, which allows you to use Lily Pup's Pickup every turn. And that Pickup gets you back the evolution spray. And you just keep that cycle going until your opponent decks out or they scoop out of frustration. Um, so that's everything thank you guys for watching this expanded list drop um if you watched the whole thing and made it to the end extra thank you uh but i will have all of the decks in a google sheet in the description below and i'll also do time stamps for you guys and put that in the comments thanks for watching i'll see you next time here on celio's network